Welcome to my very quick session about uh, my sample on how to use the HyperScript target, mark target markup templating inside the, uh, the web part. First of all, uh, some words about me. I'm Microsoft MVP in office uh, development and business application category, and I'm working as a senior consult consultant and trainer on Microsoft 365 and Power Platform. So you can find some information uh, like my email, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and the GitHub uh, account. So uh, we can start on uh, uh, thinking about how to develop uh, the UI uh, for a web part. So uh, there are two ways uh, uh, to approach uh, when you want to create the UI for a web part. First one, the first one is uh, create the UI during the development, of course, uh, by using SharePoint Framework uh, and TypeScript. Uh, you are able to use React or another uh, frameworks uh, using Fluent UI or another UI framework. The second uh, way is to use a template system, for example, uh, Anglebars. And then your web part uh, have to read the data uh, from graph from SharePoint and then pass this data to the template system and evaluate it around time. In this case, when you want to use a template and evaluate uh, around time, uh, we need to, uh, for example, by using the handlebars, uh, we need to uh, understand something. If we take uh, an example, the PMP modern search web part, uh, this web part uh, use uh, handlebar syntax, uh, some helpers, and then use uh, HTML and CSS to build the UI. Of course, if you want to use some complex controls, uh, we can use uh, some web components provided by the, the solution and of course the Microsoft Graph Toolkit components. Basically, uh, the Graph Toolkit components are the web components and the same web components that we have inside the modern search web part, it's built as a wrapper around the some fluent UI React component. This is just uh, a slide uh, to, to explain better uh, this concept. Uh, in the modern search web part, uh, you can select the, the custom uh, layout, and then you are able to edit uh, the handlebars template uh, by writing your HTML using handlebars functions, uh, using uh, the graph uh, toolkit or some web components. In this case, the uh, document card, it's uh, on a web component builded on top of uh, the Fluent UI uh, React uh, document card component. And uh, in this case, it's the, the, the only way if you want to use React inside uh, uh, handlebars, because handlebars are not able to understand React. And then the only way is to generate uh, on a web components and then render uh, as uh, on a standard web component inside uh, your HTML uh, handlebars uh, template. So uh, what is the pros and cons of the two approaches? So create UI during development or use the template and evaluate around time. Of course, if you created the UI during development, you have maximum freedom of which framework you want to use. You have the great flexibility on implement uh, complex UI because you write code and you are able to do anything excellent development and testability, but of course you are not able to modify the UI without having to recompile the web part. If you use the template and evaluate the runtime, you have maximum freedom on customize the UI without recompile, but you have, uh, I think, a uh, poor UI testability. And of course you are not able to use all the framework that you want. Uh, without tricks, for example, using Fluent UI React uh, without write uh, some uh, wrapper using uh, web components or something like that. But this is my sample. Uh, I created this web part uh, by using uh, a, a different template system called uh, HyperScript Target Markup. Uh, basically, it's uh, uh, on a uh, template system. Later, I'll show you some, uh, some syntax. Uh, that use the uh, target uh, string of the JavaScript that you can find in all modern browser. And inside this uh, uh, template system, you can use directly the React component, for example, the Fluent UI component, but you are able to use uh, any React components if you want, uh, without wrap anything. This is very interesting. 
basically, this uh, so the template that you have to to create uh, basically it's uh, on a piece of uh, JavaScript code, and this uh, code it's evaluated through the function constructor. So inside this slide, you can find some uh, line of code. The first line it's uh, uh, the line that use the function constructor by passing the string that contain the template that we want to evaluate. And the second piece of code, it's the execute eval function. So the function, the arrow function that uh, uh, use the constructor function uh, that we have defined and call it by passing the function context. The function context is just a JavaScript object that contain all the data and all the function that we want to pass to uh, our uh, template. And uh, the last part of the code, it's uh, the way to render as a React control our uh, template by using the HTML. So HTML is the object that implement the HyperScript tagged markup. And then this is the simple syntax. Later, I show you an, an example uh, on how to render the execute evil function that it's the object that it's returned from our template, and then by using React DOM render, render directly this component to the DOM element. The context object, object of course, uh, contains some fields. We have the reference uh, to the HTML. So HTML is the reference to the HTM engine, the reference to React, the reference to the, uh, the, the theme object, the reference to the team variant, if you use the web part inside on a, uh, on a section and you want to change the, the variant background uh, to this section, you have inside the context the object that represents the team variant. And then another three objects, uh, the FUI, it's the reference to the Fluent UI uh, object, the namespace that contains all the controls uh, of the Fluent UI, the Fluent UI hooks, that uh, are uh, useful inside your uh, your template, and just for this sample, an object that contains the uh, Fluent UI sample data. I use this one to have uh, simple data to show how to use this template uh, inside the web part. So before the demo, I want to uh, sh show you some uh, information about the HyperScript tag markup. So this template system, it's uh, on a J JSX-like syntax in plain JavaScript. So you are able to develop uh, application inside uh, directly inside the browser by using React or Preact. Uh, it's used the standard JavaScript tag template that are available in all modern browser, and it's very light in terms of uh, dimension of the library. So uh, this is a uh, basic introduction to the syntax. Uh, you can use the spread prop by write as a string uh, the HTML tag and then write, for example, dollar props to, uh, to pass uh, more than one property. If you want to use uh, the React component, you have to write something like dollars and the name of the components to pass the instance of the components inside the target template string. But the, the good thing is that you don't need to transpile nothing because uh, uh, by using this technique, uh, you are able to use it directly in an in a HTML-like syntax uh, the uh, all the control all all the React controls uh, that you want to use. Uh, there are more improvement are, for example, the uh, possibility to use more multiple root uh, so fragments uh, without problem. Uh, use the comments and uh, close the tag by using slash slash. If you want uh, to uh, understand more information about this uh, this template, uh, you can find here the, the link of the. Um, GitHub repo. It's very, it's very interesting uh, library. So now I want to show you my demo. This is the uh, sample that you can find inside the PMP web part uh, sample library. So basically, it's uh, on a simple web part, and it's uh, uh, you are able to see that if I click on the on the button, uh, the the value here it's uh, incremented. Okay, and uh, let me show you. Uh, the property of the web part. So if you click on the edit, 
you can find some information. So the information on how to use uh, uh, the, the, the context object inside the template, the possibility to load the Fluent UI sample data, and of course, if you want to use the Fluent UI, load the Fluent UI library components. But the good thing is here, you are able to click and then edit directly the HTML template. So basically, I want to show you here, the, the only thing that you have to do is the return the HTML object, and this is the syntax. In this case, I create uh, this object in the team provider by passing the team variant, and then I create an a stack panel, and then I create an a label and a primary button and an a list that have uh, some items and an on render cell. So this this part, of course. I'm able to write some JavaScript. It's not TypeScript, but it's JavaScript to define the on render cell. And of course, to define some class names and some items that you want to use directly inside your template. So by using the React hook, we are able to use the state. And then we have the count and set count. And this is the reason why if I click on the button on click, I'm able to invoke the set count and increment the count inside the state and then render inside the label. This is very powerful, but uh, what about the testability? So the good thing is if I write here the bug, bugger, I don't remember, the bug, the bugger. Okay. And then click on save. If I open the Sorry, I need to check again. OK, save and then apply. I'm able to debug inside the, the developer tools the code. And then we are able to, to check all the uh, React components or, for example, original items. We are able to see all the objects that we pass inside this Fluent UI list component. It, this is very, very powerful. OK, very publish. And uh, just I want to, to, to mark this one. All these controls are not uh, web components. It's just uh, React uh, components that come from the Fluent UI. And you are able to see here the source code of the web part that uh, basically take uh, the template from the property of the web part and then create the function context by passing some object like, again, React, Team, Team Variant, Fluent UI, Fluent UI, hooks, sample data. And then by using the function constructor, we are able to invoke this new function by passing this object and then render the component and then render again inside the DOM element this template. So I'm finished. Thank you, and uh, that's all. Awesome, super cool stuff there. Uh, really excited to see that.